Greetings demons and welcome to Collect Corpse and this time around we are going to be doing something pretty special so I have gone ahead and collected all of the various battle packs we've had since 2020 for clones and droids and we are going to be putting them all together into one mega set and I, I, I'm real excited for this so let's just get into it and look at all the sets that I've picked up. So starting off with what I've already shown, in 2020 we got the 501st Legion Clone Troopers. This was the first 2020 modern quote-unquote style of Clone Trooper that we received and it is honestly one of the best sets we've ever gotten from LEGO Star Wars. It is up there as one of my favourites at the very least and I know a lot of people do love this set. But yeah, moving on from that, in 2022, because there was no battle packs at all in 2021, we got the minifigure pack of 40558, which is the Clone Command Station, and this is the only Phase 1 clone pack we've actually had since 2020, which is really interesting. Obviously, there's been various ways of getting that specific commander, including the gunship and the advent calendar, but uh, yeah, in general, a very interesting set. One that I never owned until this video, which is really cool to me. And yeah, just a really nice way of getting some plain P1 clones, as well as my third at this point of that commander. And then we also, in 2023, received two different battle packs, starting off with the second 501st battle pack, the 501st Clone Troopers battle pack, 75345. This one is the specialist uh, battle pack, I suppose. It comes with all the various accessories, including the macro binoculars, which are very, very cool. And otherwise, I actually think this is one of the weakest of all these battle packs, mostly down to the fact I'm not a huge fan of that build, but obviously that is not a major part of this video. Also, in 2023, we did get the 75359 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper battle pack. This was obviously a really big release for people that wanted more of the 332nd, and it did include Vaughn, which is not the best version we could have gotten of Vaughn. It's a very generic figure that just happens to have the visor and the little, you know, rank insignia. But still, very cool. You do get the jetpack troopers, which is very neat as well. And in general, I think this has one of the strongest builds for the clone side, at the very least, with this amazing looking swamp speed, in my opinion. And that leaves us with just the newest release for 2024, and that, of course is the 75372 Clone Trooper and Battle Droid Battle Pack, and this one, of course, brings back the shiny P2s, as well as a cheaper way to get the Clone Shock Trooper than the gunship, and obviously the stars of the show really are the droids, but they are not the focus of this video. Some pretty lackluster builds. They are references to the original Clone Battle Pack, which, unfortunately, I haven't been able to hunt down for this video, but yeah, still very, very cool, and yet some very nice clones, as well as some very nice parts for some custom building. But with all of those out of the way, let's open them up, see what clones we actually get, even though I think we are all very aware, and uh, yeah, build up the army, and then we can start building up a set. So this is everything you get from the five clone battle packs that we've had since 2020 and this is actually a really nice little starter army, it's got to be said. There's a good variety here, obviously you have your jump troopers including the ones from the 332nd here, you have a bunch of shinies both for P2 and for P1, a ton of 501st, like obviously the majority of this is 501st or 501st adjacent uh, with the 332nd there. And yeah, you know, you get your specialists, you get your shock trooper, you get a few commanders, you know, you get Vaughn specifically as a named one, but you also get, like, your lieutenant, I guess, I don't even remember what um, this guy's actually supposed to be, as well as your commander here, so you're getting a nice variety of different clones, and obviously all in that matching style to the point where if we just move the commander, oh no, if we just move the commander out of the way, let's grab one of our... Phase 2s, so let's bring these forward actually. Phase 1 and Phase 2, the only difference is the helmet. If I just do this, 
Exact same. They are the exact same except for the helmets, even down to the facial expression underneath. All these are exactly the same, so that is kind of incredible to think about, the fact that, you know, even, you know, between generations of clone, we actually have so much compatibility here, and it all adds up into having some of the most customizable and just well-designed clones, in my opinion. But yeah, this is all the minifigures. Let's get on to all the parts that we're going to be working with. So, for the record, I have taken out all of the Clone vs. Battle Droid Battle Droid builds, uh, mostly because they're for my droid army. I don't want to use those parts for this. But that still leaves us with quite a lot of parts. This is just the parts from the 501st Legion Battle Pack, so just the ATRT and the Bark Speeder. And then otherwise, uh, including the sticker sheet, which I don't know if I'll end up using, this is all the rest of the parts. So there is a ton that we have to work with here. Like, this is really a lot to actually be picking between and actually choosing what we're going to be building. Obviously, we also have all the weapons, which is a decent variety. We have some heavy blasters, we have the rifles, we have the phase one shorter rifles, we have pistols, we have the regular blaster, just a nice variety as well as thermo detonators and binoculars. Nice to get. And then I don't think I'm going to use them, but we do have a few extra accessories here in orange, blue, and then one macro binocular in white. Which, you know, now I say that, I have actually not done this yet because I don't actually have any plain white P1s. Let's actually see, does this work with them? Because it is a an attachment that they did use in the Clone Wars. That looks pretty cool, actually. I quite like that. That is good. Okay. I may end up doing this um, in the finished build, but we'll see. So, after a little bit of Google searching, a little bit of scouring the wiki, I think I'm probably going to at least attempt to build an ATPT as pictured on screen right now. And, yeah, I don't know what's really driven me to get this. Obviously, this is a vehicle that is purely Legends-based. It was actually cut content in the original Star Wars Battlefront. And, yeah, just in general, it's not necessarily the most interesting of the various walkers from Star Wars, especially in the Republic era. But I think this could actually go pretty well with the parts I have. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go away for a few hours, probably, see what I can come up with, and... Obviously, I think it should go without saying, beyond the vehicle that I'm going to build, I will be building some form of base or operating centre of some description. But yeah, let's see what I can do with the idea of building an ATPT, an all-terrain personal transport. I think that sounds fun. And so, after a few hours, I have come up with this. So, this is, as I say, very much based on the ATPT. It's not the exact same, it, you know, doesn't have the full roof, it's not fully enclosed. I'd say the overall shape is pretty similar, and I'm sure you can probably tell the front is very much based on it, uh, with the two smaller cannons and the slightly, uh, I think typically it's shown to be a bit smaller actually, but I've made it a large cannon at the bottom. I've put on little lights just because I thought it gave it a bit of colour. I've tried to get as much of the dark red into it as possible, purely just to give it some of that Republic flavour that we see a lot in the various vehicles of the Clone Wars, but yeah, in general, I'm I'm happy with how this came out, but I think it could have done better. Obviously, with the fact that, you know, there's no actual roof section, and it is a little bit big on the front, I feel, there are definitely ways I could improve this with more time, more pieces, and, you know, that's not to say I don't have many pieces left. Let's just get this out of the way for a second. I have quite a lot left, and I did spend a little while just trying to get some semblance of some sort of communications base or command base or something like that. I don't really have the pieces for it. I've used a lot of the larger base pieces on the actual walker, meaning that I don't really have too much to work with in terms of actual basing and, you know, actually building out a proper base. That is something that I may need to add a few of my own parts, maybe a base plate potentially to actually get something that works but yeah we do have quite a lot still to work with but in any case just going over the actual ATPT equivalent that I've built we do have a few nice little interior features I've put a few different panels down just to show the control scheme we've got levers as well and a seat of course in the middle 
So we're taking our P2, P2 clone, our shiny, and just sticking him in there. He's a little bit close to what I'd consider to be the window. Uh, the black is very much supposed to be sort of the equivalent to what we see in the ATPT, which is, you know, the you can't see through glass, essentially. The, uh, I don't even know what the real world term for that is, because it is a thing that exists. But yeah, he is a little bit close to that. You can potentially imagine that there's some sort of screen that he's looking at. It is a little bit closed up, though. And overall, I don't think it looks too bad. Obviously, from the very front, you can see the very top of his head. He's not that well protected. I could probably lower him down a little bit. But overall, we do have attachments to put blasters on the back there, which I think is a very nice feature. And in fact, let me just grab any two random weapons uh, from the weapons bin. I'm trying not to grab one of the large rifles, but it is difficult because they are mostly large rifles. Okay, so we've got one of the... Phase 1, like, modified blasters, goes in there, and then we also have a normal long rifle, which can go a little bit lower down. I can probably uh, mix them up a little bit to make them work a little bit better, but yeah, so you have weapon storage. I could potentially, and there is enough chairs in the set, obviously from the Swamp Speeder, to make it a two-seater. I could have potentially done that, made it so that there wasn't the storage for the weaponry, and that, in a way, I think would have made a bit more sense. But overall, I'm kind of happy with this. This is a very interesting design, in my opinion. I think that I've done a pretty good job of making something that feels Star Wars without it being, you know, exactly like anything that's in canon or Legends. I like the greebling that I've done on the legs, especially. I think that's, you know, it could get built out a little bit more, but I think that looks pretty good. I do realise I didn't actually put one of these on both legs, so I wish I could take that piece off. Um, but yeah, the feet themselves, a little bit flat, I probably need to, you know, dig through a little bit more, maybe find some more pieces to thicken those up a little bit, but the fact that it stands freely is actually pretty good to me. I can't really pose the legs too much, I did try and it doesn't really like to stand at that point, but that is also an issue with the 501st Legion ATRT, so it's not something I'm overly worried about, and I think the overall imposing nature of this just looks pretty good, I mean... Once again, just putting a random clone next to it, just for scaling. It's a pretty big walker, not quite to the scale of, you know, Lego's actual version of the ATRT, but it's definitely on the bigger side. It's definitely one of the larger size walkers that you'd see in canon, and I think that's pretty cool, honestly. But yeah, that is what I've been able to come up with. As I say, there are definitely plenty of pieces just bringing the tray back in. There are plenty more pieces to go over, plenty more opportunities for me to both upgrade this as well as build more stuff in general, and I think this just really shows the potential of these sets. You know, at the end of the day, LEGO is about creativity. LEGO is all about, you know, dismantling everything, taking all the pieces and making something new, and I'm quite happy with what I've been able to do to actually achieve that. So, overall, that is going to be it for my attempt at building something out of every 2020 battle pack so far. I'm I'm happy. I'm very happy with how this come out. I think it could have done better. I definitely think I need to spend a bit more time on it in the future, and I may revisit this in a future video. But in any case, that is going to be it for this build and this video. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe to the and ring the bell so you never miss upload. Otherwise, comment below. Do you think there was a better option I could have gone for? Maybe a variant of one of the builds that is already in the sets? I'm up for suggestions, and I'm definitely willing to do this again. I'm definitely going to keep the parts around for the future so I can do something like this again. But in any case, it's going to be from me, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye! <laughs>